Hey guys, Brad M73 here, and I'm just doing a hopefully a quick video uh, on a little bit of my workflow that I use when recording videos. Now, some of you have asked, uh, or I've, actually, I've talked about in my videos how I record with either Fraps or OBS, usually OBS, and then I immediately compress that video using a product called Handbrake. And Handbrake is very easy to find. As a matter of fact, if you open up a internet file browser and you type in Handbrake like that and hit enter, you're going to come to handbrake.fr and this is actually where you can download it. And it, it's free, it's completely free, open source. I don't know if it's open source. I, I might not actually be open source. But anyway, it's, it's completely free and it's awesome. Um, you can use it for all kinds of stuff, um, encoding video for iPods and iPads and Android and anything else. But um, mainly I use it for uh, reducing video and compressing it for my YouTube videos. So you download and install it like you would any other program. It's awesome. So I have Handbrake open up here. Well, not yet. It's opening. Now it's open. Okay, so I've got my handbrake open. And right now it loads up just whatever the default settings. I don't, I, there are some presets that you can choose, but I don't know of a way to customize these unless it, there's like an import or export setting. I don't know. I'm not into it that much. I just know what works for me. So when I compress a video, uh, let's see if I have something. Ooh. Let's see, OBS video, there we go. All right, so I have, these are a bunch of videos that I have. Some of them I need to delete, but um, I have, this is actually the one I'm recording right here because um, there's no thumbnail, but I need to record, or I need to compress this video right here. So it's 15.3 gigabytes right now. And I'm gonna open this up. Whoop, I'm gonna, kind of walk through it a little bit more slowly so you guys can see. Um, I, the first thing you have to do is define a source. So a source video file. And you can do that by clicking here, this source button up at the top with the little picture of a clapper uh, next to it. And I typically just do a single file. I don't do multiple files because it gets a little bit confusing. Um, so I'll just typically do a single file right here. And again, it comes up with the, uh, the file browser for me to choose the file. And you can see there's a bunch of them. You'll actually see originals and you'll see the compressed versions, uh, original ones and compressed versions here. So I need to do this one. And this is actually a, I think it's Construction Machine Simulator 2016. So we're gonna double click on that. And it's going to scan the uh, file, it's gonna put it in there. So, okay, we it's at 48 minutes, 49 seconds. From there, if you notice down here under picture, the source is 2560 by 1440. Now, I don't actually want to use that resolution in my video editor. Now, now I could, uh, but I'd have to use something like Premiere Pro or, you know, a higher end, like, like Final Cut Pro or things like that, the higher end piece of software. Um, I typically like just using iMovie. Um, statistics are that the vast majority of my users are gonna be watching at 1080p. Uh, very few people would be able to watch at, at a higher resolution, 1440p or, or uh, 4K or whatnot. Uh, so I'm gonna actually reduce this down. Now, the one thing I kind of don't like is it, it won't let me choose the height adjustment. I'm not sure why um, what this needs to be automatic. I don't know why, so I need to choose the width. The old version of Handbrake, I usually could just choose the height, but I can't anymore, which I don't like. Um, but anyway, so the vertical resolution, not the horizontal resolution, but the vertical resolution of 1080p is actually 1920. So I'm gonna put 1920 in there. That way it's going to convert the 2560 lines of vertical resolution down to 1920 
vertical lines, which will shrink that down to 1080p, and that's what I want. Uh, I'm not going to use any filters. All this stuff th stays the same. The audio stays the same, and I'm going to come back to video in just a second. Subtitles stay the same, um, and chapters, all that stays the same. With video, though, um, now you can choose different codecs, MPEG-4, MPEG-2. Um, I typically encode in H.264 because that's what YouTube uses, and it's going to change anyway when I put it into iMovie, even though I'm going to output in in uh, MP4 there. Uh, now, it should still remain H.264 inside the wrapper, but um, anyway, all of these options are going to remain the same. You can keep all the presets as far as optimizing video. All this stuff, I just keep uh, at preset except for constant quality. Now, we have a quality slider here. So if we go to the left, the video is going to be lower quality, but your file size is also going to be smaller, and it can be much smaller. Um, but I'm very anal when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to my video quality on YouTube. I want the file that I upload to YouTube to be of the best quality that I feel is manageable for me. And I've got about a five megabit per second upload speed. That's the maximum I can get here at home. And so most of the time, my videos are around 10 gigs. You know, sometimes there are a few gigs less. Sometimes there's a few gigs more. But when I do, you know, hour, 50-minute hour, maybe hour and 10-minute long, minute long videos, they tend to be anywhere from 8 to 12 gigs. And I'd say they average around 10. Um, so I'm actually going, the, the default uh, quality is 20 RF. Um, pl placebo quality here, the placebo would basically be really no change in video quality. It is still going to compress it quite a bit, but um, there should be really no visible change uh, to your, your video. But I typically reduce or increase the quality to about a 10 RF. And from there, uh, some people will actually choose web optimized. I don't because I, I find that it reduces the quality of my video prematurely because you have to remember whatever you put into YouTube, YouTube is going to process that again and it's going to reduce the quality anyway. So, <clears throat> you know, if you, if you feed it something that's really nice and crystal clear, it's, it's still going to compress that, but it's going to have a lot more information to compress that from and the result is going to end up being a much more clean looking video you shouldn't see as much artifacting and things like that you're still going to see some it's youtube it's a streaming service but generally speaking you want that to be as minimal as possible you want to have the best image possible uh, that you can have and i th i personally feel that 10 rf is a really good starting point and to keep web optimized unchecked and obviously ipod 5g support unchecked as well i'm not even sure why that's an option maybe the ipod 5g had a weird resolution or something but um, i keep both of these unchecked i keep this on mp4 uh, now one thing to also note is if you are uh, compressing multiple files uh, at one time, or let's say we uh, add one video to our queue, and then we come back and we add a second video to our queue. Um, for some reason, it will actually change the file container from MP4 to MKV, which depending on the program you, that you're using to edit could potentially cause some problems. So. I pretty much, for some reason, this started in a recent update. It hasn't been fixed. I can't figure out how to fix it. Uh, if anybody no out there knows, by all means, put in the comments. Let me know how I can fix it. But um, for me, uh, I just do one video at a time. I close the program down. I reopen it. That way, I don't really have to worry about it. Um, you can also just rename it MP4, um, but... Sometimes people forget to do that, especially if you want to, to queue up multiple videos, five, six, ten videos, or how many videos you need. Um, from there, I'm just going to hit Browse. And that's going to put me here in the same 
uh, folder that I was at before. And then just down in the file name, I'm going to type in whatever I want it to be. Um, so it's going to be uh, construction machine sim 2016 uh, episode one. And, it, and it, again, it's going to say save as type MP4 MKV. Um, and again, with what I was just talking about before, um, you can still choose MP4 here. If you're like, if I were to do a second video, and what, if you save that, it's still going to convert this from an M MP4 to an MKV. I don't know why it does that. I think it's a bug, but uh, if you just do one video, it's it's never a problem. Um, once you once you do that. All you have to do is click here on the start button and it's going to begin encoding. Um, and depending on the power of your computer, uh, it could take anywhere from, you know, right here, you can see, we can see time remaining 10 minutes and well, it's going up to 11 minutes. The more it compresses, the better idea uh, the, the computer, the program gets on how long it's actually going to take. So it'll, it might go up to 12 or 13 minutes or so. And then, um, you know, it's going to kind of hit a peak and then it's going to start coming down as it compresses the file. Um, if you have like an older processor, like I have an older i7, it's a 4700HQ, which is actually a mobile processor. It might take about two to three times longer to compress this file compared to my 5960X, which right now, as of you know June 26, 2015, is still Intel's most powerful i7 processor. Um, you can go up to the Xeon series, but um, that's the Xeon stuff and not the i7. Um, let's see, uh, anything else to talk about? That's really it. Once I get this file, this output file, I actually... Uh, copy it to my Mac uh, and import it into iMovie to do all the edits and, you know, maybe cut out some stuff or add some stuff in or, you know, and add my titles in and some, uh, you know, transition effects and things like that. And that's essentially my workflow. But this will actually take a file. And actually, we can, we can go over here to my file browser and just uh, look at some comparisons. We have this file here, which is 20.4 gigabytes, after compressing in handbrake with these exact same settings, it reduces it down to about 7.8 gigabytes. Um, let's see here. Here's a, a farming sim video. This is 21 gigabytes. Um, that reduces it down to 8.3. Um, now, again, I could go lower. If I bumped this RF up factor up to 20, that uh, might get that file down to four, five, six mega or six gigabytes. Was I saying megabytes the whole time? No, six gigabytes um, in size. But the smaller you make your video, the more you sacrifice in file size. And that's one of the reasons why I try not to do it um, whenever I can. So that's really about it. Um, if you have any questions, Ask me down in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer uh, whatever I can. Um, if, you, if this video has been helpful to you, by all means, please hit that like button. Uh, please share it with your buddies if you've got people also looking for a, a good video compression tool. This is a very, very good one, it's, and it's completely free. It uses a standardized MP4 format uh, with H.264 codec, which is you know, very, very standard, like everybody's using that these days. And and the best thing, again, about Handbrake is it's absolutely free. You just have to download it and learn how to use it. So um, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Brad M 73 and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.